Okay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm talking with John. <laughs> John, yeah. the fisherman from Redding, California, and he's, uh, he's been meeting a lot of people the last few days. Tell, so tell me what's been going on. It's really funny. Just this week has been kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, Peter um, sent me a video of a gentleman named, I think his name is Alan Lewis. Yeah. Who does aquaponics. Yeah. Really neat. So I watched that video, of course, right away. It was kind of right up my alley because that's what I've been doing for 30 years is taking care of fish. Yes. Even though they're just tropical fish, you know, for hobbyists and stuff. But you learn a lot about water quality and the, and the, and the nutrients and the minerals and all that that, that <clears throat> go along with, you know, maintaining that system. And I told my, my wife right away as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm going to build one of those. And so anyways, my wife is at work and the gentleman that works there started talking about how he's just so sick of the corporate America and every inch of them just wants to get away and just go and, and, and plant his own garden and, and start feeding his family and become self-sustaining and, and all that. You know? yeah. and, and I've been thinking those things for a lot of time, but, I, but I've realized since talking to Yahweh that, that that's not what's supposed to happen. You know, I just, we're all going to be together and we don't have to go hide in the damn woods and get away. You know, <laughs> paradise yeah. is already here. It's already been built. We just need to get rid of these these Zionists that are that are running the, the planet, so that we can start building paradise again. That's right. But However, anyways, I'll, yeah, I'll stop so you right. I'll, I'll stop you right there because okay. when people have these capabilities, they should start now. Like, don't wait. We know. Uh, uh, I mean, what gives them like the hope for the future is the very period of time that we are in. And if you can start now, or if you've got it in your heart to begin doing that now, then start now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, go on. <laughs> that's what's kind of been That's what's been happening. Yeah. It's really, really amazing. So she, um, so she's talking to this Michael guy that she works with, and he's telling her all this stuff. And and it, and in in part of in the middle of the conversation, he says, "I was watching this video on." Aquaponics. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and my wife says, that's funny. My husband just watched a video on aquaponics. <laughs> and he's going to build one. <laughs> and so right away he wanted to meet me. Right. And so we communicated over the Internet and, and <clears throat> an email back and forth. And we met actually today, this morning at about 11 o'clock. Him and... Four other women and another gentleman, which was, this was his home that we all met at. And um, he had a, a pool that they had actually filled in with, with soil. I think the pool was just really old, and, and they were going to turn into a little garden. But he had a nice little piece of property. But we all started talking about life and the vegetables and our world and, and why is it that we don't see any plants planted on our own, on our streets that, are, that bear fruit and and on and on and on and on, and how everything is controlled in our world. And, and we were all like-minded. There was no question about it. Right. And um, so we were all, you know, wanting to do something, you know, to start providing food and, and, and working together to, to have that common thing that, that, you know, we would all share in this and, uh, and it's just it's just the beginning of it, of course, just talking. We just start talking. Yes. But it's just amazing how I just, now everybody I see, I just want to talk to them. Yeah. Were you not like that before? Did you keep to yourself? Yes, I was, Ash. I've always been like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. But always afraid. Always yeah. afraid. Afraid of what? Tell me what it was. That, uh... just afraid to just say what I thought yes. to someone. Right. That God loves you. Yeah. I mean, that simple, those, you know, those three words. And, and there's many times that I've been moved to just say that to somebody. Yeah. You know, and always been afraid to. And now when I see someone, I just hear them talk. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of scared my wife off now. Well, she says, I'll go wait in the car. <laughs> I said, that's okay, honey, but i got to go talk to this man. <laughs> 
And of course, now, now you can say God loves you, and by the way, He's here. <laughs> and this is His That's new name. Right. <laughs> yeah. And even yesterday, it was, I mean, even today, it was like, you know, I want to get to know all these people first. And the, But the funny thing was like, every inch, I mean, as much as Mike was telling me about how he wanted to get out of corporate America, I wanted to tell him about Yahweh. That's mm. all I thought about the whole time I was there, and I had. And, and not that I didn't have plenty of opportunity, but there was just so much to talk about that was going on in our world. And just knowing that they were all like-minded, I knew that, that it would, I, did, I felt like it wasn't going to be a, a problem to actually even say something to these people. I even told them I was John the Fisher. And they all kind of looked at me funny, but I said, you know what? It would be like me telling you right now that you aren't who you are, but that's who I am. I've been this all my life, and I'm finally now just awakening up to know that that's... What, I, what this is about, I'm just bringing the people that I know together. Have you um, been watching those reincarnation videos that you always been favoriting at our Capstone yes, channel? Just, yes, I watched a couple of them. That was was that Gandhi that, that was in the one? Yes, Ga Gandhi, and uh, the case was the little girl, wasn't it? You always just walked in his his. How you doing, John? Yes, yes. Hey, y'all. Uh, How you doing? <laughs> now, what's going? That is, what, they, what, what? They, they tried to destroy the story yes. by saying that she must have overheard him at the shop. Yes. Too. Yeah. But the reality is, you could find out when he started going to the shop. Right. Yeah, Yahweh's just saying on that story that Gandhi was in, the little girl, they tried to discredit the story later by saying yes. that she must have over, which, which was ridiculous. And, and Yahweh's saying that well, you could find out the timing his of. Wife had died, he had a little boy now, a little baby to feed. Right. He then had to start exporting his goods. Exporting his goods. And he was goods. taking them to the shop. Right. And they were getting rid of them in New Delhi. Right. right. So he had a flow going. Yes. That's what he's doing. Because he was travelling 148 kilometres away. It's a long Each time. way. Yes. Each way. Each way. Okay. It's a long way to go. To right. end up in a city of several million. Yes, absolutely. The and in the shop where, where his wife, is, yeah. Where is. Right. Yeah, Fantastic story. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty pro profound. There yeah, ex extremely profound. And what was also surprising, I, I didn't actually watch these. Uh, I, I was too busy slamming the Yahweh group <laughs> at Facebook, who have since locked me out, and, and Mike, <laughs> who put me in there in the first place. Um, so I didn't actually watch the videos. I was just hearing bits and pieces, and um, that, that was an extreme. Now, what was also interesting, Yahweh says, is that, like... The Hindi people had always believed in the reincarnation of the soul. They understood it, but it seemed that in more modern times, people had fallen away from that belief. And yeah. uh, much, much like a, a, a seed, if you like, got in there to destroy the truth that they had. Mm -hmm. And it must have come from okay. West, from the Jews. Yeah, yeah, that would yeah. have been Jewish influence. So, because the Pharisee Jews, who who are the um, the Zionists that rule the world today, they don't believe in the reincarnation of the soul. They believe that uh, uh, this, is, this is it, don't they? That this life on earth is it. And uh, they've got to take everything for themselves because this is what it's all about. So, Well, after I've, I've been reading the book of Enoch today, and I tell you what, that shined a lot of light on a lot of things. Yes, well, when you read Enoch, yes, you can see. Now, of course, that begins... Uh, with Enoch being taken up, and it begins with him seeing the end of all generations. Well, we are right there now. This is the last generation, if you like, uh, uh, upon the earth, because this is where it is all dealt with. This is the judgment and the consummation of the ages. That's what we're going through. And so he opens with that. And then he's, it's like he's taken back to be shown more specifically the first judgment which, of course, came to pass at the flood of Noah. So, right. uh, yeah, that's a really... Inter and that, of course, is the oldest of all books. And yeah. It's a good, it's a good read. I, I mean, uh, it, it just, uh, it's just like talking to y'all. I mean, it was just, there was... It, it brought light to a lot of things, you know, that seemed like were half-truths to me. Yes. You know? They just broke the Muhammad Code. Now, Yahweh's just saying that he's just broken the Muhammad Code, of course. Oh, um, 
Really? Yes, yeah, he's, he's How just... How exciting. <laughs> he's got, you'll do an upload on it, won't you, babe? Yeah, it's in the book of Solomon. Yes, he's saying five that it's 16. in the book of Solomon, chapter 5, five verse 16. And oh, really? Yeah. That's the word lovely. Uh, yes, the word well, lovely. Maybe it's, maybe it's verse 6, something like that. You'll find it. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, it's the word lovely. It's either in verse 6 or verse 16. The word lovely is um, Muhammad. Muhammad. So, really? Yes. So you then take the Muhammad word there, only yeah. found once in the Old Testament. You then look it up in the New Testament, and that comes out to be throne. Car, yes. 906, right? So then we look up another word, because we can't find that in the, the same word, lovely. It doesn't make sense. And, we, and, right. the, and the throne didn't make sense, and we couldn't find it. So we looked at the word cast, and it has the same root origin as 906, which is to throw. Okay, so where that ends up in this Revelation uh, 2016, um, I think. <laughs> and um, in it, it's talking about, uh, what did it say, Dunn? You got, can you bring it up in your computer then? 2016? Yeah. Revelation? Yeah. Hold on. I'll just put this down, go over to open up another program here. That's the last. Um, it's the last cast. In 2015. Oh yes, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Right. Now you then look up the first number in Greek. 2015. 2015. Right. Okay. Here we go. 2015 in Greek. A manifestation, especially the advent of Christ, past or future, appearing, brightness. So, Hello. so it, it, end there. no, yeah, he's saying it doesn't end there. <laughs> there you go to the verse number in Hebrew. In Hebrew. Okay, let's go to 2015 in Hebrew. <clears throat> To turn about or over by implication to change, overturn, return, pervert, become, change, come, be converted, give, make, overthrow, retire, tumble, turn, again, aside, back to the contrary, every way. From 2127. From 2127, in, which is Zia, of course, and Zia is Rhiannon. That's right. All right, and in Greek, Zia, 2127. Don't worry about that. Now okay. we're going to go straight to... Um, Ezekiel 21, 27. Okay. This is, this is how God works. This is the, the trail, the I yellow brick it. road. <laughs> I get the beaker. Yeah, you do. Okay. What is it? Ezekiel? 21, 27. Okay. Oh, I'm not doing it right. 21, 27. Okay, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. Right. Now, 21.27, overturn, is Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Then Muhammad. Then Muhammad. Right. Why? Jesus was beating the Pharisees who had Rome behind them. Muhammad was beating the Pharisees who had Rome behind them. Right, yes. Right? Gabriel spoke to both. That's right. Okay, in the family and in Muhammad. Yes. His father, his uncle, was a Hindi or new Hindi. Yes. Right? Etc. The second overturn then was Muhammad. Muhammad. So what's the third one? The one, whose right the one whose right is is, which of course is the Christ. Right. The Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall teamed with Mohammed in Ahmad yeah, Mahmud Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad. Yeah, the only way I can remember is Mahmud's last name is Ahmadinejad Jacket. Ahmadinejad. Ahmadinejad. Jacket. That's funny. That's, 
That, that, was, Dex's, that, that, that was Dex's little helpful hint. <laughs> That's so funny, it reminds me of this lady that we could never say her name as her lady was Terry Apatsuchea. Oh, yeah. And so her, one of her friends finally said, tell your friends it's for to, to say apples and cherries. And there we go. And after the sheep finally told me Terry apples and cherries, I was able to say Terry Apatsuchea. <laughs> isn't, isn't that the funniest thing, but it's just, that's funny. <laughs> Oh dear. Now, John, you're talking about you, you need to phone or, or contact your son, Kyle. Yeah, the, you know, the two by four thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they've been, been, been uh, working on me really hard the last two days. I called my daughter, and this has been really hard for me because, <clears throat> actually, you know what's funny? It really wasn't because I just knew I had to do it. Yeah. Even though I didn't want to, I knew I had to. Yeah. <clears throat> and I know it's going to be a good thing to come of this, I'm sure, because my son is a very open-minded person. And, yeah. and, uh, how old is he? I, how, all he's ever been looking for is Yahweh anyways. Well, how, how, now how old is your son? He is, let's see, you know, I think he's 26 now. Now, you say he's in I, he's in jail, is that right? What? what yeah. Well, no. I told you about a little bit about it, but... He, he, um, it's, it's been about, um, not good things. Yeah. Um, sexual things. Yeah. And, um, and he, it's hard to say what possesses the boy, but I think part of it, like I told you, I think he's just so darn smart. He knows so much, and he's not had anybody to talk to. He's not had anybody that could speak any truth to him. Right. His, um, tell me something, is, uh, can, can he, is he able to Skype through a computer from where he is? Do they allow that? Um, no. I don't know. I don't. Okay. I don't. Because I was... But I, I would certainly find out. I was thinking the perfect one to talk to would be Adam. Yes. Adam would be very good for him to talk yeah. to. Yeah. I love your son already, and I've only talked to him twice. Well, yeah. He's, uh... <laughs> He's one very bright boy. He's been through his stuff. He's he's been a witness to all kinds of uh, the way the world operates. And uh, and and, yeah. he, and and like your son, you say that uh, all he ever wanted was Yahweh. Well, uh, the same with Adam from a very small child. He was mm -hmm. a completely different child. E every fiber of his being was tuned into finding God. And uh, of course, uh, well, he is who he is. He's Lazarus. So. That explains uh, that uh, right. compulsion. Yet when he when he did find God, of course he was a teenager of just uh, how old was Adam then? Seventeen. That's right. It was his seventeenth birthday when I when I actually found him. And of course uh, Yahweh, you know, he, he's the rock of offense. <laughs> and it took it took it took Adam um, how long? Uh, a, a trip back to Canada for nine months, <laughs> and then uh, he, yes, he was gone nine months, and then he came back, and he still, he, and he, he knew every time that he was separated from me, that he had to mature in within his soul, and uh, so every time that the separation came, okay, I, I've got more growing to do, and when he was he, he was sent, we sent him to. Um, to Canada for nine months, and he, of course, witnessed more, more and more, because our, our angels sure. do, they work on all of us. Wherever we are at, our angels yeah. are there to work on us. And he came back and he'd learned some more, picked up um, more uh, of the rabbit hole kind of stuff that I quickly sorted out. Once he sure. thought it was okay to see me again, he, he came back and he was back several weeks before he could handle seeing me again. Um, mm -hmm. And that was only because of uh, stuff, uh, emotionally stuff that. Uh, but anyway, it's all good. And then, uh, of course, it took Yahweh to knock some sense into him through absolute sheer and terror when uh, Adam was with us as we set off to go take the swine uh, flu cure, you know, uh, up through the mm -hmm. Northern Territory. This was 2009 when the world was needing to be vaccinated against the swine flu. Of course, that was all bullshit. So we took the cure to the Aborigines and Adam came with us because he and I were technically homeless. That's the time when my family 
um, he told me to leave and never come back kind of thing. <laughs> and God was never to, put, ne never to set foot on, on the soil of their property again. And uh, they did give Adam the option of remaining with them because they understood that he was innocent in all of this. However, he said, ah, no, <laughs> I'll go with my mum. <laughs> so we were homeless there for a bit. <laughs> But anyway, it was uh, during that that uh, he got the uh, still um, uh, attitude knocked out of him by, by God through sheer fear and terror when we told him that uh, this was the end of the road. He, he could hitch, hitchhike his way back to Sydney. We were in uh, the desert in, <laughs> in the Northern Territory at the time, nothing around. He's a diabetic, of course, no money. <laughs> now he's got his hitchhike. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I sent my kid packing once too. In fact, I moved and said, you're not coming with me. I gave you two months to find a place. That was the hardest thing I ever did. Of course it was. Well, <laughs> But it was a good growing experience because, you know what, at that time he really realized he did have a lot of growing to do. Yeah, well, that's what it came about. He came back and expressed the fact that he did yeah. have a lot of growing yeah. to do. Well, well, it was funny because uh, uh, we... we um, at, at the, I went to the tent. We were already packed in the car, and the, Yahweh sitting behind the, the wheel with the motor going. And uh, so I, I tell him, I just announced him. I said, "Well, this is it, Yahweh. You know, Brian said you can't come with us anymore. No, your attitude sucks. It's not about you. It never has been about you. It's about you know, it's about us and what it is that we do in order to you know, like save the planet. <laughs> so you got to find your way back. <laughs> well, my goodness gracious me." The, 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 the boy who was arguing the night before and going off his brain was on his knees, crying in sheer terror. <laughs> ah, George, you can't, you can't leave me. Mom, you can't leave me. I'm afraid. I'm scared. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going, okay, <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> and then I, I'm thinking about this. I, I, in my head, I'm thinking this whole, like, being part of this, Scene that was playing out, like this is this is my beloved son that I'm right. telling no no more. However, my husband is my Lord and my God, <laughs> and I obey him, not my son. <laughs> so anyway, so I go okay, and I'm, I walk back to the, the window of the truck, and Yahweh's there with the motor going, and I just say, um, Adam's on his knees right now, crying and and begging in fear and terror. Uh, for mercy and not to leave him. <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, he says, tell him to pack his tent. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> so I walk back and I said, Adam, get your gear and get in the car. Well, my God. He, he packed up so fast. The night before, he was dragging his chain, complaining, you know. What a, mm -hmm. what a, what a turd he was. <laughs> he, got, he was in that car within minutes. And silent, <laughs> silent, until he felt okay. <laughs> and of course, we were just talking backwards and forwards and ignoring him. And and then he sure. began to ask questions and you know, that kind of thing. But it was that night. See, with Adam, he he knew that he had to reconcile this. He had to get where I was at because he understood that I could not budge. I, I you know, yes. I, I could not. Right. And see, my. Um, uh, th this, is, this is what it is that families need to appreciate is that yep. somebody who has been seeking the truth of course as I, I had and Adam a, as well and of course we are right. who we are and like oh. yourself and others out there I know that have been watching us for some time who have been seeking the truth there have been many rabbit holes Many rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. Now, in my own case, I was shown the rabbit holes uh, right before mm -hmm. I found him. But in my own case, the journey was, it had been nine years until I found him. And right. so there were people in my life for a particular season, and I knew they were there for a reason. Yet the rest right. of my family did not understand, and they took exception but I knew I had to remain strong because it was literally a script being written. And as I obeyed and followed, I knew, you know, I'm looking for the Christ on the earth that I couldn't afford not to. I'd rather die. As a matter of fact, I said that. You know, I, I will, it, you know, I know you're here. I'm going to find you. And unto death will I do it. So if that meant losing my kids, my family, and I died in the process, then that's it. So I think what is difficult for families... 
and uh, possibly in your own case too, where you have friends and family, and, and Kyle. And what's your daughter's name? Um, Kristen. Kristen. Kristen and Kyle are my two kids, and then Denise's are, are Adam and Chelsea. Adam and Chelsea. Beautiful names. Yes. Well, yeah. children, you need to understand that um, we all do reincarnate. Yeah. And we've all been... It'd be all pointless otherwise. Yes. Yeah, Yahweh's just saying it'd be all pointless otherwise. However, there's a, an extremely important scripture that the, the group that threw me out, <laughs> somebody was quoting it, they, 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 they said part of the reason that they threw me out, you know, apart from telling them the Christ is here, and, and did you read everything I was leaving at, at that site? That, oh, yeah, I read the whole thing. Right, okay. Um, that, that I had no knowledge of scripture. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I began with scripture. <laughs> And I led them like small children. Now go here, go there. Anyway. Um, yes. You know, the uh, sad part about it is, is they, I, these people, they, they get, it, it's, it's like the media, the book is like the media. They get the little tidbits and you've got somebody feeding them their food every day. Well, these people are actually and afraid. They have, it's history. Yeah. So you read about this in 10 years' time. Some child will read this. Yes. Say, how, how stupid were they? Yeah. yeah. Yahweh's just saying that the book is history. It is history. It, it happened then. Yes. Now, also, Christians are afraid because they're they've... They're making history now. Yeah. Um, Yahweh's just saying that we are making history now, which is uh, right. absolutely right. But also, Christians are afraid because... Now, I know because I was in... Uh, I went to church, if you like, for 14 years to see the, the deception, and Christians are told that uh, if somebody uh, knocks, if you like, the Bible because they believe it to be the Word of God, that they are antichrist, that they are of the devil. So, of course, you've got God back here, and, of course, you know, the Word of God was never a book. You had the prophecies of Isaiah, you had the scrolls of Ezra, you had the, the Old Testament prophets, who uh, wrote their dreams and their visions that uh, some of them came from God, some of them didn't. And mm -hmm. the, the word of God was made manifest. It became flesh. So it was the living human being known at that time as Jesus or Yahshua, Yah saves. So it was, the, it was Yah, Yah, Yahshua, Yah saves. It was Yah the soul in the Father who got to live for 33 years. I call him the young buck. <laughs> the young dude who was, was cut off. But the soul gets to... Now, that, it was because he was cut off uh, that that opened the way for his soul to come back through reincarnation. This time, live his life to, at this point, 68 years, where he is now the old man. And he has said over and over that he was naive, a naive young man. So as, you, as you've got the naive young man on the cross, and uh, now he's reported to have said, Father, forgive them. Like, like yeah. talking to the father. Well, the father was within him. He was the father. Right. And he's reported to have said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Well, Yahweh said, <laughs> Yahweh said, fuck that. They knew exactly what they were doing. And there is no forgiveness oh. for them. It's the same Pharisee... Same as the angels. It's the same Pharisee Jews mm -hmm. and Rome who put him there. And they are the right. same ones because they reincarnate as well. So they are all back here. That's why he said this generation will not pass away. Now, first of all, he was talking about the destruction of the temple that occurred 37 years after the crucifixion in 70 A.D., Okay, so the temple's destroyed that he prophesied. But also, he was talking about that generation would be held accountable for, for putting him on. Well, that generation is back here. They are all the same souls ruling the same way. You've got the temple priests. That's all of your preachers, your pastors, your evangelists who have been devoured by the book that Lucifer put together called the Bible. Now, what is... What, what does the Bible mean? It means the book. Okay, now who called it holy? Who called it holy? God didn't. Because as Jesus, he, he, he told no one to write a book. 
because he sure. knew when you write something down, it is subject, first of all, to interpretation, and it's subject right. to alteration. If you write, write a letter today that, you know, in a couple of hundred years' time, somebody finds, and they, they didn't know you at the time, and they're, they're trying to understand what it is, and they think they know what, what you're trying to what imply, trying. all these kinds of things. And so you get people sure. with agendas. Now, of course, the agenda of the Pharisee who did not believe in reincarnation or resurrection, if you like, what, what is resurrection? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Well, that was the conversation that he had with myself, Martha, as uh, we're on the way to the, the tomb because Lazarus, my son Adam, now in this life, had been dead four days in the tomb. Now, of course, Lazarus is symbolic of mankind. And in this life named Adam, so what have you got? Lazarus dead four days in the tomb. So we have this conversation and, I, uh, you know, I say, because uh, I, I was always running out to meet him along the way, you know. <laughs> Still do that in this life. <laughs> but I slowed down a bit lately. Um, and I, I said to him then, well, you know, if he'd been here, he wouldn't have died. And then he, he, we have this conversation and he says, well, I'm the resurrection and the life. And then I say to him, well, I understand that he will rise again in the resurrection, you know, meaning, so I, I understood then that we would resurrect at the time of the end, okay? Mm -hmm. So in my head I was trying to get, okay, I understand that he will live again then in the resurrection, which is this time now. Uh, however, mm -hmm. you know, you're God, you can do whatever you like. So I left it completely open, and of course he went and raised him from the dead, Right. Come, Lazarus come forth. So that, that was symbolic. It was all prophetic of this day now because mankind has been dead. Slowly they're waking up. Yeah. However, you, you have the, the, the Christian world and you are surrounded by them over there, Christians. You have the oh, yeah. Christian world who has been devoured by the book that everybody has been reading and the manipulation of the words the information that's yeah. been left out about the reincarnation of the soul. And yeah. so they've, they've bought the Zionist line, if you like, and they think of God as a spirit. And, uh, you know, when he comes back, he'll be coming back as the spirit, you know, the phantom on the big white horse in the clouds and all of this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Well, that's because the information about reincarnation of the soul was removed. The conversation as Jesus that he actually had with Nicodemus was a very lengthy conversation. It went on for about this long. And Jesus explained to Nicodemus about how the soul must come back down through the ages until it reaches its perfection. And he described it as the sun rising and then the sun going down. So it is with each life. And of course, Jesus referred to uh, Job. Now Job, which is Joel here with us, Job is Joel. <laughs> now that should be the, it is the oldest book and it should be the first book in the Bible, but the arrangers of the Bible put in the Torah, which is the first five books beginning with Genesis, and the God of the Torah is Lucifer because Jesus doesn't kill anybody for picking up sticks on the Sabbath. And I will say this over and over for all of you Torah believers and you're knocking yourselves out trying to perform these petty laws and, you know, get it right with your feasts and Sabbaths and all the rest of it, you know, right. ha have a rest on Saturday. You know, contemplate, you know, spend time with your family. Rest your physical right. body. Because the reality is that the Christ is the Sabbath, and he is right. already here. So we rest in him. He's here. Right. And when we right. wake up to that and drop all the petty rules and the laws, Jesus did not say that he was the fulfillment of the law and that not one jot nor tittle, he doesn't even know what a tittle is for God's sake. Do you not see that the writers with an agenda have right. written and manipulated into the script to trap everybody at the end so that they're not looking for the dude to front up as the most royal right. man and they're knocking themselves out, going back to observation of the Torah which is from the Babylonian Mishnah. It was called the Mishnah then. It's the Talmud. 
Now, right. have, have you read anything of the Talmud? Have you done your... No. Yeah. Well, Sherry's got some uploads there. I, I read... I've seen it. I read about yeah. Sherry, and I saw enough of it. I can't even... I don't even... No. No, you don't. It, it's a, a total abomination. It's the abomination that makes desolate. That's what Daniel yeah. referred to. The abomination that makes desolate, standing in the, in the holy place. Now, I'll leave that one to Sherry. Sherry's, Sherry's more... She's a, she's a warrior, isn't she? Oh, oh yeah, she's a real... But, you know, it, 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 each of the saints are warriors in their own way. Um, yeah. We, have, we have personalities way. that, that, that uh, God works with and uses. Our, our angels work with and use yeah. because sometimes our audience is a little bit different. Sherry goes in their boots and all and right. slashes and slays and rips apart. <laughs> and, you know, that's... You know, so, so so do I, if you like. That's why I've been locked out. Yes, you the do. The sword yes, of you truth. <laughs> but it's all about I, truth. I, I, ha I have the, um, I don't know, I guess I would call my, I've always kind of tried to follow the bees with honey effect. You know, it, it's the lure of some sort, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah. always yeah. been that way, you know. Yeah, well, well yeah, Yahweh, well, I mean, you know, everybody rejects him and he says over and over, he has to be rejected, so he goes out of his way. <laughs> Actually, he, he doesn't go too far out of his way. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? If you know it's gonna it doesn't happen, take right? too much for people to reject You're him. You're right. Never uh, goes too far. Well, um, uh, yeah, so even when people are beginning to like him, he's got to do something to cause them to reject him. And my, my family, my, my mother and sisters, are a perfect example of that. So he brings judgment against my sister. Oh, my God, now, now he's, he's worse than the devil. <laughs> It's all about rejection. Well, you know what? Y'all gave me plenty of reasons to reject him all along, and it was all, all along the way, but there was really no reason. Yeah. But that was just my flesh, you know, the part of me that I, all the stuff that I've been taught, you know. Yeah. And, and the other thing was that y'all smoked pot, and, I, and that, Ooh. And you, <laughs> don't get this wrong, because I smoked pot, and, but what was funny is how I judged you right away, y'all. Yeah. The minute... I saw all that he did that. I instantly had a judgment against him. Yeah. But there was something in me that said, John, uh-uh, don't <laughs> judge him. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, he does that deliberately, you know, because, cause, cause like you, how, how many people are there? I almost felt like he did that to me intentionally because it was like, I, when I first met you, that video came out the very next day, and I had a total bad taste in my mouth about y'all, but I couldn't, my the, my soul couldn't fight it. It was just, I mean, my soul fought the flesh all the way. It was like the St. Yeah. John. You just, just don't don't judge him. Just listen. Just listen. Listen, yeah. yeah. I did. I just sat and I listened, kind of like the song that Hiko did. He said he just listened to you after a little while, and he knew. I love that man. I yeah. would really like to converse with him. I love his music. He's yeah. a nice. He's a very. He, yeah, I'm very. Attra I'm very attracted to him. Yeah. You know, as yeah. a person. He, yes. He's 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 awesome, and and of course we used his Christ is back uh, song and played um, it to death. Oh, the people of Fiji just loved it. Christ is back. I have it. <laughs> yes. I have it. I feel special because he sent it to me. Lovely. There you go. <laughs> Well, uploaded it. Uploaded it. One of Jaws' believers, one of Jaws' true followers. Yeah. Go, so go I and, felt pretty good about that. Go and post it everywhere on Facebook. Oh, you know, now, now I've got to okay. think about the moment. <laughs> um, well, you, this, whole, this whole Facebook thing is all new to me. I mean, even just uploading videos and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm, this is all learning. I'm, I'm getting pretty, pretty good at it now. So good. Well, I've got well, to start doing my own downloads now because I want to start saving your stuff. Yes, do that. Do that, absolutely. Now, um, yeah, well, it was all new to me, too. I wasn't on Facebook until just recently, and so I've been find, and finding out how it works, and, and I've been surprised about a, a, a few things. But um, now, now I want to go in there and, and uh, you know, finish off the kill, if you like. <laughs> the sword of... <laughs> well, the... No, no, John, John um, getting on to a, a serious matter that people need to understand... The world is crying out for salvation. The people you just met, they are all at their end. They know the system sinks, the corporate beast is the corporate beast. It has nothing to do with God. As a matter of fact, it is the death of God. Is what is a corp? It's a corpse. Corporation. Corpse. Dead. And that's why 
all capital letters. It means dead. Go to a graveyard and look at anybody who's dead. Their name is in all capital letters on the tombstone. It's a legal term that means that, 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 per, that, that person of the least estate, in other words, dead. All right? So if you're going to write your name, write it all lowercase, capital at the beginning and, and you know, in your names, right. but all lowercase. Right. Because legally, that means somebody who has the most estate, if you like. So that's, right. that's why everything, according to the corporate world, they cannot communicate with you unless they write to you in all capital letters. Because, now this is all the straw man. You can... Um, Sure, I read that. I read that. Right. Well, does is Kyle, can, does he have access? Does he know about the straw man? Well, I'm going to, this is this is what the angels are telling me right now. I, I, Kyle is a very persuasive young man. He's like your son very much. Mm. And, and like I say, I mean, I, I see, I saw that in your son because he likes to debate. And, and he, he has no problem debating with anybody no matter who mm. they are. Hmm. And uh, even if he's wrong, you know, he'll find out the truth. Yes. And he, he may say something, and maybe he has an opinion about it, but he will at least debate it, and, and then he will, he, will, he will research it and find out what is the real Right. Well, true. that is the key, doing the research. So yes. if he has that facility... Yeah. <clears throat> yeah um, he, he must have access to a computer, does he? Do they allow it? Or, or well, what? I don't know what they have access to in jail. Right. So. Okay. But I'm going to find out. I just contacted my daughter yesterday. Right. And it was kind of funny because I said to my, my daughter, she believes in God, but she goes to church and stuff. And, yes. And it's, I, it's funny. I'm sitting here talking and thinking to myself, why haven't I really said anything to them? And I, I guess it's that fear of them, my own, my, my rejection. closest sibling. It's rejection. You're, you're yeah, anticipating rejection. Do it the other way around. Well, Yahweh's just saying do it the other way around. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He says, uh, "Tell her, look, there's this fuckwit down in Australia who keeps saying that he's Jesus. Check it out for me, will you?" <laughs> give the name. <laughs> give the name. Tell me what you think. He said, "I've been watching him for a while, and I, I, I don't know. I can't make Higgin or tell. What about you?" <laughs> I just, that's funny because I, I told that oh, there's this guy. Some I don't know what his thing is. It's something Coke or something like that. Oh, JD Coke. He's a he's a f wit yeah. I don't even like using that word, but I like that John you use it. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, he's an f wit. And uh, I told him the other day, I said, you keep up the good work. I said because you're so stupid, you can't even tell when you're being manipulated. <laughs> That's right. He he's <laughs> he what? He must be twins. He 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 must be twins. Y'all saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Not one person is that stupid. Yeah, 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 I'm saying he must be twins because no one person is that stupid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's um, one of, one of the, the, the trolls. And they do, they do a great job getting the name out there and uh, uh, they do more, more, um, more uh, talking, if you like. And than we, than we saints do. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, that's how I met Ja was through a negative comment. That's how I was, that is exactly how I actually came to your video. Was someone said, yeah, and here's the guy that's part of the problem. Right. And I listened to him, I said, well, wait a minute. It doesn't sound like it. That doesn't sound like it. Wow. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, and that's just it. You know, I was like, okay, and you started listening. I was like, okay, you know what, I have a discerning heart, and I know when I hear something that's, that sounds right, and you know, it's, it's full of truth. That's right. And that's the whole point. Uh, the saints, the saints are those. Look, uh, again, going back to the Aramaic, um, which is more accurate, but they're still being manipulated themselves. But the Aramaic mm. account, if you like, which is a, a lot uh, older than uh, the scripts <coughs> they were using for um, the New Testament, it, it, um, there, there's a conversation that... that uh, now, this would be right because uh, as Jesus he was saying that to be my disciple you must be a seeker of truth not 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 love not a seeker of love love like, like you know the whole world is hung up on love mm -hmm. you know um, you know that the new age movement and all the rest of that it's all about you know vibration and energy and love and all. you must 
be a seeker of truth, capital T. And he, of course, is the truth. However, in the enemy, what did he say about the enemy? He, 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 he said that, you know, the, the, the devil has nothing in him, like the devil has nothing on him because he is truth, but there is no truth in the devil. So, you know, the devil has nothing on him. And it's interesting because um, while Adam was with us last year and we were at that time out at the farm house-sitting for the people that we did, that was the, Adam had a dream. Now, his dreams are very specific and they are prophetic. And uh, he dreamed of the old gas rig and that was a week before it, it all came to, to be. Um, but in this particular dream, we were all together, the three of us, in the living room that uh, you know you'd see on the uploads, and uh, the devil, dressed as a man in a suit, you know, with hair pulled back in a ponytail, but looking all respectable in a suit, and a, I think he even said that they had braces or something like that, and wearing a coat and everything, comes over to Adam because Adam was sitting away from us on the couch, if you like, we're at the table, whatever, we're working away, mm -hmm. and. The devil says to Adam, he says, Lucifer was saying to me that I'll not give up until the very end. And then he says to Adam, now tell them. Now, why wouldn't, now think about this. He went to Adam and then he said to Adam, now tell them. Mm -hmm. Just think about what, you see, he can't approach us. Right. Lucifer cannot approach us. No, I just read that. He can't look upon you. That's right. And so he had to go. To Ad now, now, the message was that I'll not give up until the very end. So he knows That's that he... That's what their pact was from the very beginning. And he knows that he will lose. He knows <sighs> that he will lose. But he's going to, you know, remain in there, kicking and screaming, if you like, and fighting until he can't go on anymore because he knows that that's the end. So what, what have you got? You've got, you've got mankind waking up. You've got people becoming very aware of the deception, who's ruling, the poisons in the air, food, water, nanotechnology, the chemtrails. I've just been reading about that today. Oh, my God. He what that? on every single one of those today. Every subject that you can think of that is... Protecting our environment was touched in that conversation I had with these seven people today. Right. In, in just a short time, well, actually, it was a short time. I didn't realize it, but uh, um, an hour turned into um, um, four hours. Right. Now, what and are it was just like we, we were just, it was just like the time went like that, Ash, and we realized it was almost three o'clock, and right. we'd all been talking all about you know our world and, and what we see, and that we're just. You know, and why we were all here talking to each other about this, because we're, we see it and we want to do something about it. Right. Now. Put a sign up on the highway and have meetings at his house every Saturday and Sunday. Oh, all right. Yahweh's saying put a sign up out on the highway to have a meeting at your house or somebody's house every Saturday and Sunday, something like that. But mm -hmm. what, now, now uh, all right, I want, I want to lead the hearers uh, along. Okay, the world mm -hmm. is poisoned. It is dying. The goal is to depopulate the planet because yep. Lucifer has elevated itself above God. That was its goal. It, Lucifer, wanted to be God. Now, by depopulating the planet, okay, well, that, that's, you know, that's, you get rid of human beings made in the image of God and so Lucifer thinks it'll win. What do you have the church doing at the moment? And this is the point I want to get across to Christians. What has that site, that group, Yahweh Kingdom, Facebook done? They have locked me out. The only truth that they are ever going to hear, they are not going to get it from their preachers, pastors, pastors teachers, evangelists. They have locked out, they have tossed out and rejected the truth. So they have elevated themselves above God. They are Lucifer. 
that now they would spit chips, say, that, well, they've already called me Antichrist and that I will burn in hell and all kinds of things. That's what they've already said to me through their comments. And, and, you know, like they're looking forward to it and that kind of thing. They have rejected God. They have elevated themselves above God. Right. So that's Some where the church are. is at. That's where the organized church is at. That's why they are anti-Christ. They have elevated themselves. They love their Bibles and their scriptures, which has been totally manipulated. How many times have we said over and over, you've read my writings. The Bible in stone is the Great Pyramid. That's where the information is. It's all to do with the numbers, the measurements. It's not in a... I don't know anything about this, Ash. These people you're talking about, like people that are on my um, YouTube, on my Facebook. Yes. All the families and friends that you see in there and that are from my in my area, and in fact, a lot of them are like on mine, which most Facebook places are, you know. It's, that's usually your people that are that have been in your neighborhood, family, friends, high school. You know, that's how you find everybody. Right. Um, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't know any of this stuff, Ashley. I know they, they don't. That's why I'm talking to them. So if you're a friend or a, a family member of John's, he loves you. You need to understand that we have been in the second coming of the Christ. Are you still there, John? It's telling me there's an internet connection problem. No, I wouldn't deny it. Okay, I'm still connected. This always seems to happen when... I'll call him back, see what happens. No, still a... Okay, I'll stop this one here and we'll keep going. Joel can break this up and... Uh... No, not happening. Alright, okay, I'll continue to talk, the, the, the film's still going, so I'll continue to talk to John's friends and family. John loves you. He has given you the news that the Christ is already on the earth. As Jesus, Yahweh, the Father, came in the flesh, he was the Word made manifest. None of you have a problem with that, do you? No. It is history. The revelation was given to John on the Isle of Patmos, on the 96th day of the year, which was April the 6th, and it was in the year 96 AD. Why was John given the revelation? It's all about the future, this time now, the time of the end, and the second incarnation of the Christ, who returns as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Almighty God. If you go to the revelation, here's John. Hi. <laughs> there you go. Okay. All right. That, that sometimes happens. Look, I'm just talking to your family and friends still, so just let me finish, okay? Okay. All right. Go to the Revelation. I'm going to lead you here. It takes a spirit of humility to lay down everything that you've been taught in church or by your parents or what you've picked up through school. As Jesus, Yahweh, said that you must become like a small child in order to inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is upon the earth now. It was always about the kingdom coming to the earth. That's why he taught the Lord's Prayer when we as his disciples then asked him how to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done upon the earth as it is in heaven. Now he taught that then 2,000 years ago as a quantum, if you like, as people would repeat it over and over and over and invoking God's will and the kingdom to come to the earth. Why? Because he knew that the earth, the solar system, was moving at 69,000 kilometers per hour and we were heading somewhere. The solar system was heading back toward the heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. So souls were given opportunities to grow up into their maturity. That's what reincarnation is all about. That's what he taught to Nicodemus, right. that what you're reading in your Bible has been cut short so that you have no understanding what it is to be reincarnated. To be born again means to 
reincarnate. Why should you fear the one that can kill the soul? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yahweh, yeah, who's lying on the bed there, he's actually saying, Matthew 10.28, we're talking about fearing him who can kill both body and soul in hell. Hell is the earth. That might come as news for all of you, but where else do the atrocities that have been committed against, well, you know, it starts long before Palestine, but most recently against Palestine, they are God's people. Israel, the lump of dirt, has been overtaken by Jews who call themselves Jews who are not. To be a Jew, if you like, he was called the king of the Jews, means one thing and one thing only. It means to be of the bloodline of the royal tribe of Judah, which was taken to safety. In 1521 BC, from the Exodus, Judah left and migrated to Tara Island. And before, in, in 580, it was 583, wasn't it? They were 586 BC. 586 BC, Jeremiah the prophet, the grandfather of the daughters of Zedekiah, took the two girls, yeah, just correcting himself, 583 BC, took the two girls to <laughs> safety and they ended up in Tara Island where they married into the already established line, the tribe of Judah, the royal tribe. So that's why, you know, just today we were watching some other documentaries on, you know, what did Jesus really look like. You know, the Shroud of Turin is the first snapshot. It's the world's um, photograph, first photograph. And it came about at the instant of the resurrection when the soul of Yahweh that was residing in the young body known as Jesus then was emerging. The intensity of the light which came from within the body himself because you've got the Creator housed in that body and he is the light and the life of all men. So it was the intensity of the light that came from the body itself that burned the image of the soul of the Father into the clock. So that today you have a photographic image of the Father who was in Jesus. So that's why it's not the 33-year-old dude. And then the numbers of the measurements of the Shroud of Turin. I was leading the people along a, a, a trail of a, a scripture, if you like. The Bible in stone, I told you before, is the Great Pyramid. It's referred to in Isaiah chapters 19, 19, verse 19 and 20. It's the altar to the Lord in the midst of Egypt. It is the witness. The witness to, to who or what? Well, it was the witness to, first of all, Jesus as uh, round one, and the Christ, because the Christ is the soul of the Father back again, who was Jesus, known as Jesus, and this time it's Yahweh, the King of Kings, the most royal man on the planet. The Great Pyramid is all about him. It's, the, 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 its location and its measurements, the 202 masonry layers that line up with solar eclipses that have occurred already. We're coming up to... Um, the second last solar eclipse, so number 201 occurring on the 20th of May, just days away. Every single one of those eclipses, when God, who is on the earth, measures from where they occur over the 25 degree latitude, either north or south, and he measures back to his rebirth location, they all spell out Jesus, Messiah, Yahweh, Lord, Yah, whatever you like. It is all to do with him. And that's how God proves himself when he's back on the earth, reborn to the earth. The only way onto the earth is through your mother's womb. I'll say it over and over, not fronting up on a big white horsey in the clouds. Clouds of confusion. The big white horse is the constellation Pegasus. It was all symbolic. The um, uh, John was shown the future now, what would be played out 
in the constellations. Everything is to do with the stars which are the witness and they all tell his story because history is all about him. So he's back on the earth the second time in his second incarnation and he is born again as a child, a, small, a baby, a child. He grows up into the wisdom, knowledge and stature all over again just like he did as Jesus. And he realises by the time he is four years old that all adults have been completely devoured and they are stupid. He was not born into a welcoming priesthood this time. That was round one. Everything he did as Jesus was prophetic and had to be fulfilled at his second coming as the Father, the Lord and the Master of the vineyard. And the vineyard is the earth. And it has been overtaken by the husbandmen who have kept the earth for themselves. That's why all the earth's resources belong to a very few at the very top of the heap. The Rothschilds, the Queen of England, who is the great whore of the Revelation, she is married to her Lord Lucifer in spirit, Evelyn de Rothschild. Her entire genetics has been fabricated to look like she descended from, well actually Solomon. Now Solomon himself was a black wizard. He was an absolutely evil man. He did not talk or speak to God. <coughs> he brought forth children who, uh, uh, from his 700 wives who were of the Ammonite and the Moabite, totally evil. Nathan, however, son of David, was righteous. He had Nathan. a son. Nathan was righteous. Adoniah was supposed to have been the king, and he was preparing to be king when David was on his deathbed. But the adulteress and the liar, the deceiver, Bathsheba, who became David's wife through adultery, right. deceived David on his deathbed. And it was her deception that caused him to give the kingdom, if you like, to Solomon. It was only a few weeks later that Sol uh, when David died and Solomon had already been made king, that the first act that Solomon did once David, his father, was dead was to kill his older brother Adoniah, and that means worshipper of Yah, who was a man, who was a righteous man and a man of peace. All Adoniah wanted when he uh, knew that Solomon had been made king was to take for himself a wife. And he named the wife. It was, um, it was the virgin who was uh, appointed to keep David warm as he was dying, of course, the, the, the circulation and, and you know, you'd get, he would get cold. So that was the habit that they would find a, a virgin to lie upon the king to keep him warm. And, <laughs> and Yahweh's saying that's not a bad idea at all. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. I'm with you, yeah. <laughs> so, now that, that woman's name, I think it was, uh, it was Shul, uh, I, I forget exactly, but it was something like Shul, uh, Shulgami, something like that, S-H-U-G, you can look it up, you can go and find it yourselves. Now she, of course, was present in the room, lying beside David, when Bathsheba comes in and deceives David to hand the kingdom to Solomon rather than um, Adoniah. So that was the wife that Adoniah asked for. And when Solomon learned of it from Bathsheba, Bathsheba didn't think anything of it because Adoniah goes to Bathsheba and says, there's only thing, one thing I want. I, 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 I want a wife and this is who I want to take to wife. So she goes and says, oh, okay, I'll you know, go and ask the king, Solomon. Well, Solomon goes into a rage as soon as he hears his request. And the first thing's out of his mouth. What is he, trying to wrench the kingdom from me? Now, why did he behave like that? Because he knew that it was the wife he had requested was the virgin that overheard the conversation with David and Bathsheba where she deceived him into handing the kingdom to Solomon. So he sent then his henchmen to go and kill Adoniah. And that same day, this dude fell upon Adoniah and murdered him. So that's the kind of dude that uh, Elizabeth takes pride in letting the world know that says that she's descended from. However, um, 
you know, it's all manipulated. Apparently, uh, Queen Victoria paid one million pounds in those days to have her genetics tidied up. Well, for a million pounds in those days, that buys a hell of a lot of, you know, good-looking bloodline going for you. Right? But it's not the truth. So you've got the counterfeit queen sitting on the throne who is the whore of the revelation. Why is she the whore? Because she is, uh, first of all, sitting on the throne of David. That's what the throne of England is, the United Kingdom. It belongs to the right. returned Christ. Right. She is the head of the Protestant church in the Church of England, or the Anglican Church, if you like. She is the head of it. Now, how many denominations do you have? You've got about 36,000 of them. What, they broke away from the Catholic Church, and you've got King Henry there killing all of his wives because, you know, he wanted a son and all the rest of it, and oh, what a horrible man he was. So he has Elizabeth I, and she, she ends up murdering her own cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots, who's the, the more, more royal bloodline. That's what it boils down to. So you've got all this murder and conspiracy going on down through, you know, Elizabeth's <coughs> bloodline that she's proudly touting, all fabricated. Until what have you got today? You've got the return to Christ who has made his presence known to her several times through the courts. With all the evidence in the world, because where is the evidence? It's not in the books that everybody is about reading on the internet or digging deeper for here, there and everywhere. This is what these, these idiots out of that uh, Yahweh Kingdom group, what books are you reading? You're getting, what, what books are you getting your information from? I'm getting the information straight from God because he is my husband. And by the way, God is father and mother. In the beginning, we shall create man and woman in our image. Who the hell was he talking to? Well, the script that you were reading would have you believe that he was talking to himself. Talking to his dick. Yahweh actually says he was talking to his dick. <laughs> now remember, he is the rock of offense. <laughs> he was talking to the mother. The Godhead is right. father and mother. From within himself. Now it all makes sense. Right. From within himself comes forth the light. Asherah. The mother. Okay? That's, that's why I'm explaining these things to you and he's resting on the bed because, frankly, my dear, he couldn't give a damn. He's rejected. <laughs> and I keep still trying to wake, shine the light on people to wake them up out of their slumber. The sepulchre. You know what? What? The reincarnation was a big thing for me too, Ash, because I've had this, um, there's always been this thing of just in my inner being that I always knew that my soul, and I didn't really even know if it was my soul or what it was, but I knew that, that I guess the breath of life that's in me, I felt like that couldn't be taken away from me. No. You know you're, what I'm saying? And, and, and I realized it could be taken away from me if I chose to do evil. Yes. But, you know, I don't choose to do evil, and I realize that my soul is mine to keep, you know, I believe, and, or yaws, or however that works, but I've always had that feeling that that I would always have that awareness that, that, that John would always be. Yes. Does that make sense? Totally. Like, I've always felt that way, and when you told me about reincarnation, that made sense to me. I mean, that made me realize that I'm, you know, that that, that is the... That is why I felt that way. That yes. My soul couldn't be taken away. Your soul can't. However, let, let me explain this. This is very important for the hearers to understand. Sure. Your soul cannot be taken away, John, because you are of God. You are one of our children, the offspring of the right. father and the mother. All souls come from the mother. All souls are female. They come from the mother. That's why he is the alpha. He's the alpha male, the one and only male soul on the planet. So for all of you guys out there who think that you're macho and all the rest of it, sorry, you're just a bunch of women. Some uh, well, more I'm muscular than others. Side, <laughs> no, I like that part. Ash, I like the feminine side of me. I, there, there I, you I, I am a passionate person and I, I like that passion. Yes. That's, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I love about you women. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, getting back to the soul, we are in the period of time that is called the, the fullness of times. What does that mean? It means that we have reached the end of the reincarnating process of the soul. In other words, the souls, all souls have had long enough to get it right. And in, um, in Isaiah, there's a, a scripture verse there that refers to the soul as being refined like silver. 
Now, silver is refined mm-hmm. in the, the furnace up to seven times. Each time all of the dross is removed, and then what you're left with after the, the seventh refining, of course, is the perfection and purity of the silver. silver. Right, it comes forth as, as pure. That's, right. Now, that was the teaching of Jesus the first time around, but all of that knowledge has been removed. So we are at the end of that process. In other words, all decisions have been made. And when we released the angels and and people are, you know, scoffing at us, well, you know, I'm still here and all the rest of it. It was, and I've just uh, uh, quoted the scripture again to you today from Matthew, which is accurate, which is to fear him who can kill both body and soul in hell. You see, those who are righteous Mm -hmm. and the meek, And the children are immortal, meaning their soul cannot die. However, we have reached the end of the uh, trials, if you like, the getting it right, so that all evil is gathered again on the earth. This is why it is much worse than the days of Noah, because all evil has been gathered on the earth, which is the gathering ground for the judgment, and the judgment has already been made. In the Revelation, it talks about the books being opened, and people think it happens in the heavenly realm of no time. It happens upon the earth. It's the Lamb of God that opens the book. I see the wheat being separated from the chaff. That's right. It's a separate. That's right. I see relationships. I, I know of three relationships now where we know that the people that were in the relationships, one of the person were literally saints, just lovely people. And the other person, well, we'll just say that they were not nice. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, well that, that, that's and, often um, the way. Those it's, relationships are, 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 are separating. And, that's right. And, uh, it's just, yeah. it's the separating of the, the wheat and the tares. And, and so what, what happens? The tares are allowed to grow up amongst the wheat until the time of the harvest. And then they are gathered up and bundled together. So there's that separation, if you like. So the tears are taken out from amongst the wheat. And what happens to them? Well, it, it, it talks about them being thrown into the fire where they are consumed. But, um, you know, uh, people have a preoccupation with hell and, and fires of burning and this kind of thing. Um, God does not desire for souls to be tormented in hell everlasting fire and all, all this kind of... That, that's very Catholic church kind. But what does it mean? It means that the souls who have not repented, the souls who are still have remained evil, it means that they are separated up, they are gathered, and they will die because we're in hell. They will die. The body of flesh will die because the body of flesh is the vehicle for the soul. In order to release the soul, the, the flesh body has to die. That's the release of the soul. Now, it means that when their angel, who, who everybody has two angels, one remains with them throughout their lives upon the earth and the other remains in the realm of no time. So the angel of death, or, or everybody, angel of death, if you like, when it comes from the heavenly realm, will get a thumbs up or a thumbs down about where this particular soul is to go. We are at that period of time. We are already That's in hell. Simple, huh? We are already in hell. So this is the killing of the body and the soul in hell. So that means the evil ones, those who have not repented, the unrighteous, the evil, who have perpetrated these crimes against God's children, the ones who have refused to do anything about it, the ones who reject him. This is very important. The ones who reject him, the scoffers, the unbelievers, all those that have rejected and mocked him, the atheists, all of those, the decision has already been made. The judgment is already in. And on the 22nd of February, what happened was that in the realm of the soul, the cords were cut of the evil ones, meaning that when their angel of death comes for them, their soul will be taken off the earth. It will spend time in a hell of the soul, if you like, the the realm of no time, for a period of time. And then from there, 
it will be vaporized. They will no longer exist as a soul. Wow. We ha- Yahweh has actually cut short time in two ways. Cut short in that um, we've already crossed over into the north side of the Milky Way galaxy. And there's a, a prophecy of the thousand year reign of the Christ. And then if you read the Revelation, it talks about after the thousand years, Satan is once again released from the pit and yeah. is allowed on the earth to deceive the nations once again. And then the consummation happens, like the, the, the final judgment, the consummation happens after that 1,000 years. Well, that's what he's cut short. He's already judged them now this time. Like, he's the judge. He's allowed to make his decision right. when he feels it's right. Otherwise, there's no right. point to him being the judge. He's lived his life. He's seen how evil they are. And he knows that given a thousand years in, in hell, or the abyss, that they will not repent. Well, it'll just, and it'll just cause more, uh, more um, destruction, if you like, at the end of, of, you know, for everybody who's on there. So he's cut that short. That's not happening. So the consummation, the final judgment, is happening now. So that means the end of the existence of the souls of those who are wicked, unrighteous, unbelievers. And that's what he's been warning about over and over and over and over. And I would say to the Christian world, you had better wake up. You are elevating yourselves above God. He came as a man the first time. He's back here as a man the second time. The word of God is the man, not the book. You have been devoured to believe that the words in a book that have been manipulated. There are prophets that you can trust. Daniel is one of them. Isaiah is about the first and the second coming. You've got Hosea. You've got a few of the minor prophets, etc. You've got the book of Revelation that is pretty well untouched because they didn't understand it. And the book of John was not uh, written by John. There were no men at the crucifixion. There were only four women. The book of John was actually written. A lot of people think it was, you know, out there in that world, they think Mary Magdalene actually wrote the book. No, it wasn't Mary. It wasn't Mary who wrote it at all. It was, however, Martha, the one who was speaking to you. That was me. Right. And I I dictated, if you like, to Mary, who wrote it down. And uh, from there it was, was published later. So those things you can, uh, uh, okay, but you need the Christ back here, he is the key to the house of David, it's about the genetic bloodline of course, and it's all identified in the great pyramid, that's what the antechamber is all about, so it's all the numbers in the pyramid that, that correspond to people in his life that he had to live with, had to have children on certain dates and times because that number is in the antechamber. He had to find Mary Magdalene, which he did, and spend the 11 years which her with he did, because she provided essential keys in the numbers through the children she gave birth to, to all paint the picture of the antechamber and uh, the, the Great Pyramid. So his entire life has been a crucifixion and rejection. He, he, yeah. he, even just two days ago, he said he'd rather go to the cross again. I'll go to the cross again this afternoon. You know, the hours he spent on the cross are absolute nothing compared to the life of rejection and the agony. You know, in the conversations that we have, he can can look back and now it becomes a funny story, but just yesterday he was saying to me, living it at the time, it was a trap. It was in hell. How am I going to get out of here? Knowing that he was the point man for all mankind. He had to figure it out for everybody. So when he said, you know, my peace I give to you, I have overcome the world. He's talking about this time. I have overcome, and he has overcome every rejection, abuse, every situation that was thrown at him from Lucifer, who was given permission in the book of Job. Lucifer was given permission to do do anything he wanted to to Job, except kill him. He could not kill him. So that's what Yahweh has been living out. Lucifer, give it your best shot. And he did not have help as almighty God and the power of the angels of the heavenly realm. As a matter of fact, the angels were instructed not to help him. So you've got God as a man, uh, powerless as if you like, because he poured out his soul amongst his children. 
at the cross. That's what it was all about. So we uh, have been living in a 2,000 year time warp from the time of the cross. It's a time lag. The earth has been catching up to the victory that was accomplished at the cross. And yes, history repeats itself and we have to live it all over again because it was all foretelling of things that needed to go down in the second coming, his life upon the earth the second time, this time rejected by everybody, including his own family, who, you know, is the most royal family on, on the planet because it's a genetic to the bloodline, were once again all entirely stupid. Just like every other royal bloodline on the planet is today. They're oh. evil and they're stupid. They're greedy and they have kept the vineyard for themselves. Divided amongst themselves. Well, so that's, yeah, that's, that, why, that's, when I, that's why I talk to my friends about that. I say to them, you know, it's like, you know, I talk about all the re resources of our earth, the vineyard, you know, everything was put here for us, you know. And, and, she, and it was all put here for our pleasure, just like Josh said, you know, the earth was put here for our pleasure as well as we were here, put here for his pleasure. That's we were right. his thought. And... People are just now starting to realize that this is all our stuff. It is. Someone else is making us pay for it. And, and you know, wake up. You know, they're waiting for God to come back on on the clouds in the and He's going to take care of everything, or He's going to remove them from the earth, away from all the evil that they have allowed. Are you hearing me, Christians? You have allowed all of this evil. Why are you sending billions of dollars to Israel? through your pastors and your preachers who are completely deluded. They are Zionists. They are of the devil. Jesus came to the man in the street. He was thrown out of the synagogue, and we've been thrown out of the synagogue again this time round. And that's the Western churches. Your Western churches are synagogues of Satan. It was never, ever about religion of any kind. It was always about what did Jesus do? He was the way, the truth, and the life. Yep. And he spoke the truth, and he was nailed to the cross for it. Nothing has changed nor has the motivation, because the same dudes who put him on the cross, and he says of all of you Christians out there going to your churches, you would be the ones at the foot of the cross selling the nails. Seventh-day Adventists, Pentecostals, Benny Hinn followers, John Hagee, Kenneth Copeland, devils, doctrines of devils. He was never, ever coming back for any one of your churches. You have all got it very, very wrong. He's here for the children and the meek and the saints who recognize him, like John. And who? Oh, yeah, he was just reminding me recently. Um, everything we say and do is, is uh, you know, Asia has been on his case forever. You see, Lucifer knew who he was the moment he was reborn. That's why Sherry's done a really good job in exposing how the Queen is obsessed with dates and times and the pyramid because, you know, they know who he is. That's why we yes, shall forbid do. Christ. That's so why they obvious. pay him no attention at all. All the others... That's how I knew Coast to Coast were all Zionist. Oh, touch. The Not only way you get they, a voice... They forbid Christ. They didn't even respond to me. I knew right not. then... But everybody in coast to coast were all Zionists. Well, you they, go to your local they church. Fed, they didn't even speak his word. They didn't even respond to me. No, no. I we shall right forbid Christ. There. Okay. Um, just recently, we bought a trailer mm -hmm. through eBay. Went down to pick it up. <laughs> First of all, at a place <clears throat> called Bethany. Well, it's Bethaniah, but Bethany. Now, of course, Bethany is where we lived, just outside, just up the road from Jerusalem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. So we go to Bethany to pick up the trailer. The guy's telephone number is, um, I won't say exactly what it is, but it ended with 555, which is, of course is the Christ number. That's how many times the word Christ is found in the New Testament amongst 522 verses. And 522 is Amma, mother, the mother cubit measure. Okay? All right. Uh, the beginning of the number was um, 2424 backwards. And, of course, 2424 is... Jesus, it's the, the two, 2424 number in the Greek concordance. You know, you find the number 2424 and it says Jesus. Okay, so what have we got? We've got Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> uh, actually, no, we've got Jesus Christ. <laughs> so we go to pick up this trailer. Now, <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so 
you know, we, we agreed to pay a uh, buy it now price. It was $850 or something. So we got the cash. We're going down to pay for it. Right. Oh, now on the way out of there, I'm, I'm, we have to drive past Lord Street, L-O-R-D. Now remember, Lord Jesus Christ. You've got Lord 800, Jesus 888, uh, and Christ 1480, all that's up to 3168, Lord Jesus Christ. So we drive past Lord Street on the way out, and I say, oh, honey, there's a Lord Street. We're driving past it. And it's a three-hour, four-hour drive to get there, and I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're not going to pay the $850. So I just feel like we're not going to pay the $850. So we get there. And the guy, Yahweh's reversing down this steep driveway because the guy's house is on a river and there are trailers down the back. So he's reversing down. He gets out of the car and the fellow who, um, who lovely man, his, his, uh, his name was Glenn, he, he's looking at us in amazement because as he walks down, four police boats just went roaring past on the river at the back of his property. And the first thing he says is, my God, I've lived here seven years and that has never happened before. I have never, ever seen four police boats go past like that in all the time I've been living here. And he turns around to Brian and he says, it must be, I have something to do with you, as a joke. <laughs> right. Because yeah. Yahweh says, oh, you know, they're after me, as a joke. Not, not joking, knowing full well, you know. It's all right, that happens. <laughs> then... Then, I don't know, the conversation opens up as it does and he started asking questions and one thing led to another. And so now we're in deep conversation. We're talking about the AIDS crew in New Guinea and Fiji and being deported. And, and for all of you trolls out there, you know, get your facts right. Yes, we were deported from Fiji proudly. That's what we were aiming for on the 2nd of June last year. And you're all saying it was for fraud. No, it wasn't. It wasn't for fraud at all. We were deported for not having a permit. <laughs> you needed a paper permit to go and do what we were doing. But, you know, God doesn't need any man's paper permit. So, so get your right, facts yeah. right, all of you, you uh, trolls who are getting the name out there really well. We were deported for not having a permit. <laughs> and, <laughs> proudly so, um, we're never to return again to Fiji. But the guy did say, under this administration. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> anyway. Under this administration? <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. So getting back to the dude with the trailer. All right, so he's now like squatting down and looking up and asking us questions and one thing after another. And then I, I've got the fist of, of cash and I hand it over to him. And uh, he doesn't count it. He says, is there $850 there? And I said, yes, there is. And he took a $50 uh, a bill out of it now, I gave him the cash, right, you know, but he hands it straight over to Yahweh, gives him back 50. So what has he done? Well, the price of the trailer is now 800. Lord, 800. Lord, right? You following my drift? He also gave him yes, back... I am. All right. He also gave him back the $50. So what is 50? Well, first of all, 50 is the combination of the English gematria of Abba, 14, and Amma, 36, 50. It is also, of course, the 50th masonry layer on the pyramid, which is the floor to the king's chamber, which lines up with his rebirth date of January the 11th, 1944. Are you understanding the synchronicity of the numbers here? So this man, by what he did, proclaimed him Lord, gave it back to him. Now, anybody else would have given it back to me because I, I handed it over in the first place. But this, remember, you know, right. the angels set everything up. So we, we, we've got the dude with the Jesus, Jesus telephone number. No, no, Jesus Christ telephone number. <laughs> so this conversation went on and he was still going on. You know, we, we, we had such a laugh because we were telling him about the straw man, of course, and how we don't obey, uh, you know, the authorities of this land and how they've... Uh, how many arrest warrants have been, or not arrest warrants, but charges have been laid against me and they've turned up to arrest me at the house and supposed to appear in court and, you know, you know, the Governor General and my trip down there and all kinds of things. You know, I'm not supposed to ever drive again in Canberra and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, all, all of these adventures, us being deported and in, in Papua New Guinea, they're going, if we set upon, foot upon their soil, they're going to arrest us and, you know, because... Why? Because we took the cure for AIDS up there and people have been cured of all of their diseases, including AIDS. 
cancer, malaria, all these things. And if you've been watch, following the, um, the videos recently that Yahweh's been favouriting, of course, you've got them, that man there doing a marvellous job at, at uh, talking all about colloidal silver and how they had 174 patients at a hospital who were there with all kinds of diseases and how all 174 of them were, were healed and released from the hospital within five days after being fed silver. Hello, Ren, about, and your anecdote. What about like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, Ash? What's that? Say it again. What about diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and stuff Look, like these that? Are, these are all to do with the poisoning of our system. Alzheimer's is a direct link to aluminium, which of course is in all deodorants, cooking wear, aluminium. There's plenty of research you can do into actually reversing these things. Again, it's the synapses of the brain. Do the research. It's all linked to aluminium poisons, heavy metals. You can detox yourself. Is that something yourself. that can be in fillings too? Is, say that again. Is that something that is in fillings? In mercury. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Get rid of any mercury fillings if you've still got them. Mercury vapor sends you mad. Mad hatters. Why did they call mad hatters mad hatters in the days of mad hatters? You know, milners because they used to use mercury, God knows what for, and they'd smell the fumes, of course, and they'd end up going mad. The same with dentists. You know, they all, a lot of them end up being mad. Uh, so get rid of the mercury fillings, because as soon as it heats up, of course, and, and having a cup of tea or coffee, you're setting off these mercury vapours. And it shorts out the synapses of your brain, so you can't think stuff. My stepfather has all kinds of old fillings in his teeth and his mouth. Old fillings? The amalgam types. The amalgam. These are all gold. Gold? Well, gold's fine. No worries with gold. Okay? okay? But amalgam, yeah, because it's mercury. So you get rid of them. You, you get the, what is it, porcelain ones or the, the, the ceramic, whatever, or, or the hardened plastic or something that, that um, uh, I had mine done uh, years and years ago while I was living in the USA, actually, and that kind of uh -huh. So all of these things have been designed. And then, of course, you've got the fluoride in the water. That's directly related to Alzheimer's as well. Um, so it's all about detoxing the body. Detox, detox, detox. There's a number of ways. First of all, bring the pH level up. We've, we've covered all that with your baking soda. Yes. Boron, uh, uh, borax, uh, a small amount helps to remove the calcification of the pineal gland, which happens through fluoride. Um, right. Detoxing, look, infrared sauna will help you detox of heavy metals. There are other things out there that will help you detox of uh, heavy metals. Wheatgrass changes the chemistry of fluoride and eliminates it in drinking water. There was that lovely old woman, a poor man's fix for fluoride, wheatgrass, just a few sprigs of it in a glass of water, and it chemically breaks it down so it's no longer fluoride and changes the taste of the water. And I think it was Adam who, who, who did that after I told him, and he, he definitely... It, it, you can I heard tell. that too. Mm. So like people have been talking about that up here already. Yes. Is that wheatgrass? Yep, yeah, absolutely. All, all of these things. Your chlorophyll. We don't really have the fluoride up here, though. We had, I, I, we checked our water. There's you, no fluoride. You did in check it. it. Well, the, that's awesome. That is really awesome. Yeah. Now, and there was a big thing about it years ago. They wanted to put it in Reading because they had never brought it up here, and because we bought it for years. Yeah. And um, they tried again to get it in our water. About I think it's been about ten years ago. They tried to do it again. And everybody put a big stink up about it. Good. And, and it, and it, Good. So I haven't, and I test people's water all the time. And I haven't seen it come up. Good. But, you know, we have different wells up here. It doesn't mean that they're not putting it in some of them. But as far as I know, Shasta County doesn't have fluoride in their water. But they oh. do in Sacramento. Well, well, you hear that, folks? Go, go move to Shasta County. <laughs> Away from the fluoride. Borax and wheatgrass. You know what they talk about our water up here? We have the, um, the Sacramento River. It runs down, and then we have Dunsmere, and they say that our water up here is the purest, some of the purest water in the world. Good. Awesome. So are they bottling it? Do they bottle it and call it Shasta? Yeah, they bottle it. All the time. Yeah, they bottle it. Right. Okay. Just keep the multinationals out. God, get, don't let Nestle in there fight tooth and that. Uh, well, actually, they're, they're all going to be out of here soon. But, yeah, just be aware of the big right. corpse coming into. Now, what else is there? Also, magnesium chloride, which is seawater. Magnesium chloride is found in seawater. But magnesium is the lamp of life, if you like. That's in chlorophyll, and uh, it's all part of photosynthesis. So you, you, you green vegetables, spirulina, dark green leafy vegetables, but chlorophyll uh, is a good way to get magnesium. And zinc you need as, as well for all these things. Now, do the research on iodine because we know that the U.S. Army or, or, or the U.S. has 
stopped doctors dispensing iodine, which is essential for the proper functioning of the thyroid to protect it against radiation that's coming from Fukushima. They stopped wow. filing it and keeping it from the general public. Now, iodine is essential, of course. It's one of the four essential elements. Now, you can do this research as well, Dr. Brownstein uh, and iodine. He's, he's got videos out there. Brownstein? Brownstein, yeah. He talks about iodine and thyroid and, and the body, etc. And the, 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 the long and the short of it is that your body needs four essential elements, and out of the four, it can make every other element that your body needs. That is clean water, um, a good salt, a sea salt. Uh, go your ocean. <laughs> a good sea salt. Right. Uh, the other one was iodine, and mm -hmm. the uh, other one is, of course, soda, as in bicarb soda. Okay. So you can make a concoction of that, as, as I do. Uh, small, you know, good clean water, throw your salt in and a few drops of iodine and a bit of baking, and just have it already made up, be drinking that throughout the day, because he says that's all your body needs to be able to make every other element that it needs for good health and for the proper functioning of everything within your body, your body systems. So something like that would reverse what my dad has, you think? He's, it, well, yes. It's a good way. Uh, how old is your dad? 71. 71. He's not that old. Is, is it... No. Uh, how is his... It came on pretty fast. It came on fast, did it? Okay. Get the wheatgrass. my stepdad, but he raised me. Right. The wheatgrass and the borax start decalcifying. And, um, look, just go through anything that he might still be cooking with, with aluminium pots and pans, aluminium okay. utensils in the kitchen, deodorants, all those kinds of things. Get rid of it. Go through it. He's his right guard. He's used it all his life. Oh, well. Turf it. Uh, ceramic or, or um, Pyrex, you know, glass cookware or stainless steel cookware. Uh -huh. Buy them a couple of good pots or something like that. But uh, um, and I use that stupid stuff too. I didn't realize that was bad for you. That's a non-stick stuff you're talking about. Oh yeah, about. the Teflon. No, no, no. That, that's another. That's another evil. Now look, you can get. Um, I've been using that for years, Dash. You can get a, a ceramic coated. I think it's titanium. Ceramic coated titanium which is a, a now it can't, it's made in the USA, but do research on that in cookware. Your Pyrex or your ceramic coated titanium, uh, much safer to cook with. I love the ceramic stuff. Good. Ceramics is good. Yeah. 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 We, have some, we have some through a company that we, that we bought some stuff that, you know, it's called Pampered Chef, and they make a lot of the ceramic um, trays and dishes and stuff like that. Yeah. They, good. I like the way stuff cooks in them, too. Yeah. And Plus, you don't use soap to wash them, either. You know, you, they're kind of like a cast iron. You just clean them out and, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. And, and yes. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, with uh, your utensils, um, your stainless steel cooking utensils, more than your plastics and things, you know, right. your plastics oh, heat okay. up and uh, all that kind of thing. So, sure. So, anyway, uh yeah, but yeah, okay. again, do your research on uh, Alzheimer's and, and reversing it. It's all about detox and getting rid of the heavy metals. And an infrared sauna, I, I've got, I call it the hot box here. I uh, saw you in it. Yeah, I, I know. Saw you in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that bit. That was cute. Yeah. <laughs> the, the cat was going after you. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's really good for sweating out these toxins. And that's part of therapy for people who are have heavy metals is that infrared sauna is used a lot because it's a, a, about sweating it out of the uh, subcutaneous layers of fat. You know, it comes out through your feet. You can do a lot of detoxing through people's feet. Uh, there's, there's many, many ways. Uh, those uh, foot baths, that ionic foot baths, they, they pull the toxins out through the soles of your feet. If you've ever done one of those, that's really scary because <laughs> the stuff that comes out of the soles of your feet is horrendous. You end up with this black, goopy greeny, oily, slick-looking stuff, depending, you know, what part of your body it's come from. And they've got these charts that will tell you, you know, what organ well, that so has come from. Because isn't it, don't they say that, like, almost every nerve you can touch through your foot or something like that, and, or 
and the nerve endings go to your foot or something like that? Yeah, well, that, that's where reflexology is another science and, and is particularly, um, again, these, these things are all alternatives. There are the Chinese. The Chinese have been onto it for centuries, as you know. And reflex, absolutely. Everything is connected in this marvelous machine of ours. And so, you know, you can have a pain in your neck, but it's actually the lower lumbar area or down in your hip that's causing the, the stress. So, yeah, reflexology, all, all of those things are really good uh, ways to stir things up. It's about opening up the pathways, if you like. And, um, you know, energy and healing, getting, like, for example, uh, essential oils. And the only ones that I, I know of to be, I, I would say, trustworthy uh, is uh, the ones that are made by Young Living Essential Oils. I don't know if you've heard of them. Made in the USA there, Gary Young out of Utah. But he's, he's well, he, you know, his story is, you know. He's doing awesome. some kind of a cold press or something, huh? He's doing this, all, he's got a special press or something. Yeah, it's the distilling. Things. It's all in the distilling, the... the um, Processing that that uh, is he the one who uses a special glass too um, to hold the oils in? I I'm not sure. I don't know about them. I do know that the you know, I, I might send you a link of someone because I have a, a a guy that's been trying to get like flaxseed oil and stuff like that. You know how it always tends to go rancid and stuff. And well, well look a, a, a tip about flaxseed oil: don't 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 don't, don't go down the flaxseed oil route. Flaxseed really? oil, no. You just said it, it goes rancid, but also it's filled with phytoestrogens. All the seed oils are. They are all part of the problem of today. Filled with phytoestrogens, really? yes. Uh, go, go to the website doctorsaredangerous.com. Doctorsaredangerous.com. The light, oh, I'll just turn on the lights here. Okay, hey, I'm going to finish my, my the what's happened to me the last couple of days that I met these guys, that the gentleman that my wife met, met at work, and then I'll let you guys go. Okay. Um, but anyway, so I went and talked to these people today, and, and we all sat around and talked about, about everything that's going on in the world, and, and we pretty much touched on literally everything. But here's an interesting thing. As, as the day progressed, one of the gals got to talking about this woman that had a dream, another dream. And she had a dream to go buy a farm. And so they started looking for a farm. And I guess she, um, there happened to another state she actually found was looking for a farm, but she came across something here in our county. And I guess she's into real estate and stuff too. I haven't met the woman yet. We just talked about her. But she has this huge farm. Three greenhouses, huge greenhouses, hoop greenhouses. She has a blueberry farm. She has an orchard of walnuts, an orchard of all types of different um, of fruits, uh, you know. <laughs> and she can't take care of herself. She needs help. And it's just amazing how we all just came together, and then that came up in the conversation. And so now we're all going to meet and go over there and, talk about maybe getting some kids from the schools to come donate their time and learn about the agriculture and, you know, and how to, 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 to grow their own foods and, and, and things like that. And that's just a little bit of the topics that we hit on today. Right. So, so interesting, huh? Very interesting. And, and you can also, how, how old is this woman? Um, I don't know. I haven't met her yet, but I believe she's probably around my age because most of these people, I, actually, she might be a little bit older because I think she did say she was a, the one gal, she's, she's a she's a wonderful older woman, so I believe she's older. Okay, all right. So. Uh, and, well, you can take along all the health tips if she's ha struggling with anything that's causing her to slow down in, in um, yeah, running sure. her property, that sure. kind of thing. But, yeah, that's the thing to do is, is to... Um, go and form these communities where you're no longer subject to the authorities and um, you can begin to declare these places as part of the kingdom of Yahweh. This is why it's essential that people know that he's already back here. They get over themselves and understand. Right. He's already, you see, Elizabeth, the thr she's already in default to him. So he's been king right. since uh, July the, the 5th in 2010. 
Now it, it's going to take people to understand that and to act on it by declaring their properties as mm-hmm. part of the kingdom of Yahweh and subject to his laws and not the statute laws of the uh, corporate governments that have been stealing their birthright from them, which is to live as a, a, as a sentient being uh, subject only to God, Yahweh. So this is why it's essential that people understand he's here. They can now act on it with, you know, without being afraid. Oh, am I doing the right thing? He's telling you to go and do it, for God's sake. You know, yes, stop sure. paying your taxes. Stop paying the enemy. Stop paying Rothschild, who is the devil. Yeah. That's where your mortgages are going, and, and your mortgage is a piece of paper. I, I can guarantee yeah. the person that you, the, the, the corporation that you yeah. gave you the you gave the promissory note to, and that money was raised on your signature. They didn't have it. It was only on your promise to pay all the interest for 30 years. You know, so you end up paying, what, tenfold? The amount that you took out? So uh, when you realize that you are the source of the funds, that makes you the principal creditor, no longer the debtor. When you know that in your head, you can tell them all to go get stuffed. And, and you know, two years ago, Yahweh had declared that everybody who has a mortgage has already paid enough interest. They own their homes. Pay no more. That's the forgiveness of your, 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 your sins and your debts. But, you know, in the Lord's right. Prayer. Forgive us our sins. Right. Forgive our, and, and about the debts. All debts are forgiven. They can only be forgiven by God. And he has already forgiven them. So everybody stop paying right. the devil. Their system will fall to pieces Overnight, if everybody stopped paying, what are they going to do? Prosecute an entire country or the entire world when everybody stops paying the mortgages? Stops paying exactly. the piper? Exactly. You know? So, so this is... Um, so declare the properties the kingdom of Yahweh. They belong to the king. And if... Yeah. You know, there's a simple way about it. If they're afraid, then you give title to the king. And then if anybody's got anything to say about it, then they have to go to the owner... Well, that's him. And, well, the owner says it, you know, gives it back. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. change anything. It just gives responsibility or, and takes, like, like, they can't kill him. Like they're going to come after John. Uh, they're they're going to come, yeah, exactly. This is what we tell people. Tell them, I'm doing, you know, Brian, let it go lightly, Marshall, told me to do this. I'm doing it to him. It belongs to him. Right. Hello? That's how the kingdom, that's how it, it all starts, is people rising up and beginning to wake up who is here, what he is telling them to do, and saying no to the devil. Realize that who we're dealing with here. Totally. The devil's have got you ensnared. He wants to liberate you. So, you know, it's all part. that's how you build the kingdom. He's the one who yeah. makes all the decisions. And, of course, a righteous king has only, it's the only form of government that has, well, you know, the only form of government that, that protects the people is a righteous king. Because a righteous right. king is um, has the divine right to rule. Well, the divine right to rule, God himself is on the earth as the king of kings, and his concern is as the servant to all, so that all of his uh, offspring, subjects, whatever you want to call them, offspring, are taken care of. And if anybody wants to come after the, the boogeyman, or if the boogeyman wants to come after the, the big kahuna, let him at it. That's why they ignore him. Because they know they can't. I had, I had a dream two years ago. You know, once I came onto the scene, you know, I'm the mouth from the south. Self-proclaimed title. The mouth from the south. It's because it's my turn. As mouth Martha... The south, that's the call you. Right. As Martha... You know, I come from Australia and I'm really short. <laughs> yeah. As Martha... Get a load of this. As Martha... I didn't get too much to say. Why? Because it was a patriarchal, male-dominated society whose testimony, the, the testimony of women was discounted and you, would be, you could be, uh, um, you know, women were nothing. They were less than dogs. So I didn't get to say too much then, although I did do some teaching. But I did accompany him everywhere and I would dress as a boy to get away with it. It's the life of Brian. You know, all those women in the scene there, they're, they're gathered for the stoning, dressed up as men. That's it. It's the life of Brian. So, it's That's my cool, turn. Ash. I just learned a new story I didn't know. I love that. <laughs> what? That you dressed as a boy when you were younger to follow him. Well, was it? Totally. I mean, I was a young woman, so, so I could get away with, 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 with you know, 
dressing as a boy. So I was the one who accompanied him to the temple. And, and there's even a scripture verse about where, where, where you know, the temple guards, like the one that was always with him. Well, that was me going to the temple. And then, then it talks about, it's, it switches tense and talks about a her. And it makes it seem like the, the, the guard was a her. And, and talking about pulling the robe. They, they grab the robe of the one and it runs away because the person was naked. Well, that was me. It was a woman. They realized it was a woman. Hello? So, you know, I've been dragged out for stoning. It was Martha they dragged out for the stoning. And I've been stripped naked and, and ran through the streets of the Rouge. And thank God it was, it was darker. <laughs> right. So, you know, do I care? And it is my turn this time because he's tired. By the time I found him, he's exhausted. He's done everything to wake the world up. So I come along and beat him around the, you know, and, and you know, uh, for well, those who say... Go ahead, I'm sorry. For those who say that I don't know scripture and all the rest of it, I know the scriptures up and my yin yang. Yeah, Devour the word of God. That's why I know how deceived you are. <laughs> it was not about the scripture. And and at, at the time, of course, we focused on Isaiah. It was always about the fulfillment of the first and the second coming according to the prophecies of Isaiah. So the things that were most uh, uh, Isaiah for me was already a part of my DNA and of course so was the mm -hmm. book of John did I know it was me that had written it? No, but it made a hell of a lot of sense when I understood it was Martha that wrote it because right. when I first became the Christian and I went that route you know, the born again Christian that's why I know how deceived they are and that's how I can right. you know, that, that's uh, the first one I went to was John and it was, like, was part of me and I would be able to explain things to people as if I was there Trying, uh, getting them to understand, well, you know, think of it this way, you know, he was a man, and this is the situation they were in, and this is what they were going through. So, you know, that's how it all, uh, that, that's how, in, and that's the, it's all part of the soul, the DNA, and um, you've got Job and Jonas here. They know nothing about the Bible. Why? Because it didn't exist in their time. Job just lived his experience, and he is the book most patient, patient man you'll ever meet. Well, that's Job. Oh, wow, so Job didn't know, Job and didn't know anything about the Bible. Of course not. He predated it, but, but he, he, right. he, he, had to, he had to go through hell. <laughs> he had to suffer so that he could be here now with us. And then Jonas, of course, he was the sign. Jesus said the, the only sign given to this evil generation will be the sign of Jonas. Well, that was this time now. Jonah did his work right. then. He, he reluctantly obeyed, finally did it. Did he know anything about the Bible? Of course not, because it wasn't, wasn't no. you know, it was nothing. He just did what he knew he had to do, did his message, and he got to be back here now and to find us. He was compelled to come to us to, because he is Jonah. Right. So, and that's the sign. It's the only sign given to this evil generation, the one we are talking to now, all the Christians. The sign of Jonah, it's already fulfilled. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, um, we've been talking a very long time and Joel's going to have some... I know, in, in <laughs> one more, few more seconds it's going to be an hour. Oh, it's more than that, isn't it? I'm, uh, well, that's right, because we got cut off. Right, so an hour and 52 second. minutes and, yeah, one hour and 53 minutes right now, so... You still there? Uh, yeah. I've, yeah, I've still lost. here. Oh, wait on. I'm I have to say one, one last thing and I'll let you go. Okay. Um, I'm getting hungry, so I've got to go cook dinner. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. I'll be quick about it. You, were, you asked me a question earlier, and you asked me if I'd always been that way when I said I always wanted to talk to people. Yes. And uh, I had something I told my wife years and years ago when she bought me a, a, a journal. I wrote in it. And, I, and there was something about water, and I, don't, I, I still don't really even understand all that, but... Um, I think it was probably had to do with Yah. But it was overwhelming to me initially because I felt like I had this thing that I had something to do with water and it was about over the whole earth. And uh, when I finally told my wife about it, um, it was revealed to me that it was like I was so overwhelmed with the fact that it was vast because I felt like this little person and I, and I had to... to do something about water for the earth. But what I realized at that point, and, and now I realize even more what that was about, was um, it was about where I was at. Hmm. That, I, that I needed to stay where I was. And I believe the water was about the living water. It was about Yah. And when I talked to Yah, I wanted to go see him first. That was my first re reaction. 
hmm. was to be with him. That's all I wanted to do was be with him. Yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't understand it, but I there was I just I, 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 I first thing I told my nephew was I said I found Jesus and I want to go to Australia. Yeah. That was that. He looked at me and he said what? And he was said okay, I'll go. Are you sure? He asked me the next day, are we still going? And I thought about it more and more, and you know I think the wind just kind of worked on me and made me realize it. No, I need you here. You need to be right where you're at. Yeah. Going there isn't going to do y'all any good. He's doing all everything he can do over there. He needs to be right where I'm at. Yeah, that's right. And of course, yeah. too, uh, uh, um, water is also symbolic. <clears throat> First of all, you've got the oceans, and uh, it, the, the sea is symbolic of the masses of people. Um, mm -hmm. And it's also to do with Sheol, the sea of. The, the, we're talking about the, the sea giving up its dead. Well, that's Sheol, and it's referred to as this sea of, of people giving up its dead. Well, that's where we are now. It's the judgment. It's, it's, and also it is to do with the word. Uh, I, remembering this from Christian uh, days and terms and the scriptures and all the rest of it, it talks about the washing with the, wa um, the water of the word. Well, well. Right. Remember, the word is not the book. It is not the words written on a page. The word is the man, the man, the man. And if you remember... And one the of word the, was with us. The word, and who was made manifest. the man. That's right, the man. And it is the, the second man. time. It's not the book, as in the... You know, that, that, that's putting God in a box, for God's sake. What, what would God contain? How can God contain himself in a book? Lucifer had called the Bible holy. God didn't. As a matter of fact, it, it is satanic because it has ensnared the whole world. In its, and in it, makes sense why, it makes a lot of sense why, because I've always thought that my wife is, well, I know maybe she's not, but I always thought that my wife was an angel. When I met her, the, and I'm sure it was probably my angel that did it, there was this bright, my wife glowed. I mean, I saw her a couple times, and I always come down and talk to her. She was working for one of my my clients at the time that I cleaned a fish tank for. And every time I come down and see her, that there, this, she had this halo of just brightness behind her, kind of like behind my head right now. Yes. You know? Yeah. She, she glowed like that. Yeah. That was my attraction to her. Yes. And, um, but it's funny, my wife really had an issue with the Bible always. She, she didn't like it. It didn't, it just didn't meet with her soul for some reason. Sure. She just. That's her discernment. Yes. She read one passage, and it was enough for her. When she got to the passage where one of the saints came into the village, and I don't remember the exact passage that it was, but um, I think it was in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, and the, and the saint came in, and all the villagers came, and they wanted this, wanted, them, wanted whoever was in the house to let them out so they could have them. But yes. I guess he gave one of his servants to them, and they had sex with her and cut her up in pieces. Well, that well, was, uh, oh, it my was... Wife, the, right there, that was it. She was done. Absolutely. It was... Um, uh, a, a daughter, I believe, and they wanted the son because they were homosexuals. Right. Uh, it, that's Sodom and Gomorrah. It was all about homosexuality. And that's, yes. that, that, that they've been judged. Homosexuality cannot exist in the kingdom of God. No. It, it is, it is evil. It is against God. It is satanic. It's everything we believe in as humans. That's right. So uh, that's, that's the, ju the judgment's already in. And that's why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. It was the... Uh, it was because it was all homosexual. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Okay. Was there anything else that we? <laughs> no, no, I think we covered it. Okay. Yes, but yeah. So, so the water, water of the word, if you like, being the man, the news. It's all about getting the name out there. And oh, I know what I was going to say to you right. is that uh, in one of my uh, writings at that site that has since locked me out. Um, it's, it's talking about the name, the name getting out there. This is, this is why the trials do a great job too. It's about the name getting out there. It's in everybody's psyche. It's about taking back the quantum of people's thoughts, if you like, love him or hate him. Uh, they're still thinking and they're still talking. But right. it, it's that knowledge going out. And this is why they're trying so hard to forbid it because they know that whoever controls the media controls the matrix of people's thoughts. So they're trying their darndest to keep a hold of, of the matrix of people's thoughts by controlling what information that they have. And this is why I get so ticked off with these Christian groups and all the rest of them who are stopping others from coming from that knowledge. That woman who locked me out, well, well those that decided that I should be out of there, um, 
she is one that she is totally anti-Christ. And, and I already warned them, you know, about the, all those who reject him in his second coming, when their angel comes from the realm of no time, the angel of death, it's going to be an automatic thumbs down. So that woman has just sealed her fate. And she doesn't even know it, the stupid, stupid thing that she is. But she has stopped others from coming to the truth. Right. And they would rather proselytize and convert uh, innocent souls over to their devoured way of thinking so that they end up becoming part of the devil system, the beast that they serve in their ignorance and their arrogance. It's I see it in all the people I talk to. I just, uh, I sent a friend of mine that's a, a Christian, you know, and and he uh, sent me back, you know, read Revelations uh, 1 7. And I said, read, read Enoch, you know, and mm. he's never even read Enoch. And I'm thinking, you know, you got the ancientest text and you're sitting here and you haven't even at least read that. Of course, I haven't either, so I shouldn't say anything. But, <laughs> so that's but, why you read it. <laughs> but as soon as I found out about it, that's the first thing I did is I went and read it because I didn't, I hadn't heard about it until, until you guys, I heard it from you. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, but I didn't, I never really associated the fact that Enoch was an important book or it was even, you know, and then once I started researching, I realized, and then I read it, it was just like, oh my gosh, how profound. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, see, that is really the script that we are following, is Enoch. Yeah. The script, we, see, he's the first. So it was given to yeah. Enoch, and that's the script that we are following. And, you know, along yeah. the way, there have so, been the prophets. Yeah, Sorry, go Along the way, there have been the prophets to reinforce Enoch, always. It, it was reinforcing Enoch. The, the true prophets were right. reinforcing Enoch. And then Muhammad comes along. That, uh, now, now uh, uh, Mahmud Ahmadinejad, what a lovely man he is. Now, Seems like... I mean, I've heard uh, Claudia say, after she realized and began listening to him, Claudia says, I'm in love with him. Now, what did Yah tell you today about the name Muhammad? It, it's the word lovely. Does yeah. that not describe Mahmud, Ahmadinejad? And Yah has already proved him to be the reincarnation of Muhammad. So how appropriate. <laughs> now, would that not be Muhammad's reward to be the yes. one to be back here now to lead Iran, the beautiful people of Iran, against the Zionist beast? And as is also. And the 71 virgins. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, and the 71 virgins. Yah's looking. <laughs> the 71 virgins, that's all part of their reward in paradise, whatever. Um, and then, of course, you've got Vladimir Putin, too, the reincarnation of Nikolai. Yeah. So, would it not be justice? See, see, God is a God of justice. It's all about Did justice. You see that? I'm not sure if you sent me that video or I got it from somewhere else where. Um, um, Ahmad is in his car and he, all the people are gathering around him and a woman wants to talk to him and she's very adamant about it and she jumps up on the car and they let her get up on the car and Ahmad says, yeah, come, come, come on up here and um, she got right up and she sat down right on the hood of the car right in his face and she had something to say to him, whatever it was. I don't know what it is. Of course, you know, the media, our media is giving it a negative spin yes. saying that she probably had something bad to say but it was obvious to me that she did it because he, whatever he said to her, yes. he pointed behind him to talk to someone else. She stood up on the car and walked off. Right. Now, that was profound to me. She, and what I saw is that he looked her in the eye and he listened to her yes. and what she had to say, no matter what it was. Yes. You know? and, and that was, to me, I saw that he had passion for her. He didn't know her from Adam. That's right. But he knew that she was another human being, and he needed to hear what she had to say. Exactly. And she knew she needed to be heard. Exactly. And it was that quick. He, he, she said what she had to say. He pointed her in the direction of somebody, and she walked off, and that was that. She yeah. was heard. She was validated. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and no, one in America, no one's validated in our country. We, I, I, I know. It's a horror story. Huh. Absolute no, horror story not. over there. There's no leadership in our country at uh, all. Well, it's There's the same in, in England, too. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, they're, they're all afraid for their lives, the, the elite. They, they know that they, and, and so they should be, because the angel of death approaches from behind. Their destruction will approach from behind. 
um, uh, Yahweh's, you know, Job. Was it 15 verse 21, babe? But the destruction approaching yeah, from, 21. sudden destruction from behind, Job 15, 21. So this is what all of these evil dudes are very aware of and, and uh, uh, anybody else out there. Again, the silver cord has been cut, so that means there is no longer any attachment, there is no longer any more immortality of the soul for the evil and the unrighteous and the deniers of, uh, of God in the flesh. So, um, and that, that happened on the 22nd. And it was strange because a lot of people were saying, um, Adam was telling us that they live next door to a, a doctor in uh, Amsterdam. And at that time, right around that, that week, if you like, you had the train crash in Argentina where all those people got up that morning on the day of their destruction. If you read that in Enoch, it talks about people going about their business on the day of their destruction. All those people who died on that train crash got up on the day of their destruction, not having a clue uh, what the day would bring. And um, right. there was a lot of things going on. Uh, Adam, who, again, uh, you know, as Lazarus, uh, particularly prophetic, he kept feeling this. He's, he couldn't explain it. He said the insides of him were shaking and vibrating. And it was almost like he felt, he described it like this, uh, he felt like a sheet of glass on a wooden table. And the wooden table was, was, this is inside of him, this is what he's feeling. Sure. And he's feeling like the sheet of glass is beginning to slip because it's being vibrated off the edge of the wooden table. Okay? Now, that is no place of peace. He had no peace. He couldn't slip. He had no peace. Now, that, that is what he was feeling. Now, remember, he's the point man for all mankind. And he said what, what was happening is that the, the doctor next door had a conversation with him, and he, she said to him, you know, it's strange, in these last few days, I've had so many patients come into um, their surgery, and she said they, they have fallen apart on the inside. They are no longer together on the inside. That's how they describe it. They feel like they have fallen apart. Well, that is that cutting of the cords. They are no longer attached to the heavenly realm and they no longer have immortality of their soul. So that means at any instant, it can be as simple as walking across the street, eating a sandwich that they may choke on something. Their angel of death is there to remove them and cast them off the earth. Yes. That's, you know, so that was the, and that was the releasing of the angel. Go ahead and do it. Like no more. And, uh, you know, with the little girls that we... Um, he was just waiting for you to give the word. Yeah. Well, well, he was. It was, it was. They were waiting for Yahweh on the 13th of April to give, give the word after the talking to the little girls and them being abused by homosexual teachers at their school. That was the end. And that's that night, he said, it ends. Take them out. Like, he was holding back, if you like, for giving the final instruction because with a... A judgment, you know, you, you go through the sentencing and then you, you come back, you, you, you know, you have the judgment and then you have the sentence and then you have the execution of the sentence. And he was actually holding back because it's a, a very weighty thing. Nobody likes being the judge and nobody likes the judge. And in his words, the judge is an asshole. That's why he is rejected. <laughs> They're his words, but the judge is an asshole. So that's, that's where those people are at. They might still be here today, to, you know, at this moment, laughing, scoffing, and all the rest of it. But they'll be gone tomorrow, and nobody will miss them. Nope, not at all. Mm. Not so. one bit. I'm hey, ready to get on with paradise, and so is everybody well, else. Yes, I talk. totally. That's where we're at. That's what it's all about. All about the business of building, and that'll keep us occupied for a very long time. <laughs> Eternity is a very long time. We need things to be occupied with. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I said to my wife the other day, and it's funny, like I said, she's coming around to things, but she doesn't have much of a choice because I've already made my decision. If she wants to be with this man, this man's going to follow Yahweh. So okay. she's either going to follow me or she's going to yeah. be left in the dust. And, yeah. and, and she loves me, so I don't think she's going anywhere. Yeah, well, <laughs> well tell, her, tell her, you know, she has discernment, and, and uh, of course she is. She's, you, you saw it immediately. She is of the light. Like. Mm. All right, I'm going to say good night. I'm getting six o'clock. Okay. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, love you. Love you too. OJ. Oh, <laughs>
<laughs> OJ to you too. All right, yeah, you got an OJ there. All right. All right. <laughs> he's he's waving. <laughs> Bye, you I love you. I love Bye. you too. Bye.